Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about post-date and post-term pregnancy. So what is the definition of post-term pregnancy? A post-term pregnancy is the one that extends beyond 42 weeks, that is to 94 days, from the first day of lost menstrual period. As many as 10% of the pregnancies are post-term. In contrast, the post-date pregnancy is the one which extends beyond 40 weeks. What are the risk factors of the post-date pregnancy? Those include, first of all, age more than 40 years. Secondly, previous history of post-date pregnancy. Thirdly, the family history of post-date pregnancy, when the patient is unsure of the date, when there is an engaffly and raised BMI. The clinical presentation of the post-date pregnancy is better understood if we talk about the history points. So when patient presents with a post-date pregnancy, ask questions related to the demographic profile. And those questions include name of the patient, the age of the patient, the educational status, the occupation, the gravidity, the parity, the lost menstrual period, the period of gestation age and expected date of delivery. And also ask in detail about the presenting complaint. Then the trimester voice history is taken as we do in routine. Then we ask details about any antenatal problem in the current pregnancy. We ask what treatment has been done so far in the current pregnancy. The obstetric history is asked in detail in which we ask about the previous history of the post-date pregnancy, the method of induction of the labor, the mood of the delivery and outcome. In the end, we ask routine questions in relation to the gynecological history, medical history plus drug history, the family history, surgical history, personal history and socioeconomic history. Then we come to the general physical examination. Before starting the general physical examination in detail, we give thermometer to the patient. We examine the hands for the pallor and cyanosis and note it down. Check the pulses. Check the blood pressure of the patient. Ask the patient to swallow and examine the thyroid for any sort of the swelling or enlargement. Examine conjunctiva for pallor. Examine sclera for jaundice. Now take thermometer back from the patient and check and record the temperature. Ask the patient to lie down on the bed comfortably and start examining the legs for pedal edema. Now cover the legs and chest of the patient with appropriate sheet and do routine obstetric examination in which we check the fetal heart sound, exclude IUGR, assess liquor volume, estimated fetal weight and check the abdominal wall edema and right upper chondral tenderness and also check the fundal height. The next step is to inquire the baseline investigation which include blood group and RH factor. The blood complete picture including hemoglobin, total leukocyte count and total platelet count. Urine routine examination including pus cells, proteinuria and glucosuria. Random blood sugar after one hour or OGTT especially in the Asian population. HBS antigen plus anti-HCV plus anti-HIV antibody test. After that, we go for the fetal test in which we do first of all the dating scan to know about the exact period of gestation. Then we check the anomaly scan for any sort of anomalies. We check the recent obstetrical ultrasound in order to check the uh, fetal biometry, lichen volume, placental localization and fetal position. Then we check the latest CTG. If not done yet, then we do it. Next comes the management of the patient with a post-date pregnancy. The management depends upon the overall clinical presentation, the examination and the investigation findings. So first of all, we will counsel the patient regarding diagnosis that she has got post-date pregnancy. We involve multidisciplinary team in the management of our patient. We explain the fetomaternal risks associated with a post-date pregnancy. The maternal risks include the risk of fetal macrosomia, induction of labor, and operative vaginal delivery. The fetal risks include, first of all, fetal trauma, meconium staining liquor and meconium aspiration syndrome, fetal distress during labor, intrauterine death due to placental insufficiency, neonatal acidemia, and early neonatal death. First of all, such patients are needed to be admitted. And we will tell the patient that aim of admission would be to plan different options of delivery. Secondly, to optimize her symptom and to provide intrapartum care according to WHO Labor Care Guide. And to provide the postnatal care along with the neonatal care, 
the contraception advice, the start of the patient and follow-up plans. Now we will talk about the timing of the birth in post-date pregnancy. If the patient is beyond 40 weeks and there is no other associated risk factor, we can wait till 40 plus 6 weeks while doing sweetening till that time. But if patient is beyond 40 weeks and there is associated risk factor, the best management would be to deliver the baby by using different methods of induction of the labor, provided the bishop's score is less than 6 and there is no other contraindication to the vaginal birth. So, the mode of the delivery depends upon the overall clinical presentation. If there is no contraindication to the vaginal birth, we will go for um, vaginal birth. But if there is contraindication to the vaginal birth, it's best to go for the cesarean section. Now, in case we plan the vaginal birth and the bishop's score is less than 6, then we will discuss the different methods of induction of the labor with the patient. If the bishop's score is 6 or more, we will simply augment the patient with the centosinone and before that we will do ARM. So, ARM plus minus centosinone would be the best option in her case. If the bishop's score is 5 or less, the options would include sweeping and stretching, the prostaglandin E2, the, it comes in the form of prostin or dinoproston and different other brands. Or in case of the multipara patient, we can go for the intracervical catheter. So how to use prostaglandin E2? Keep 3 mg of prostaglandin E2 in the posterior vaginal fornix. Reassess the patient after 6 hours along with the fetal monitoring and if needed, repeat the dose of 3 mg of prostaglandin E2. Reassess again the patient after 6 hours and if the bishop's score is still poor, then we can go for cesarean section. If the bishop's score has got improved, then by explaining the risks associated with induction and by vigilant monitoring, we can even repeat the third dose in selected cases. Once the patient goes in labor, provide care according to WHO labor care guide. And you can find the link of WHO labor care guide in the i button in the top right corner of this video. Provide appropriate postnatal maternal monitoring. Discuss the different options of contraception with the patient. Now, when can the patient be discharged? That depends upon overall clinical presentation of the patient. If no complication happens, she can be discharged 6 hours after delivery. So after discharge, we can call her for follow-up at 6 weeks to inquire about her symptoms. We encourage breastfeeding at that time and discuss the contraception options in detail again. So thank you so much. That was all about the post-date pregnancy. Subscribe on Obs and Gaini. Allah Hafiz.